Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Ah, devastating last minute news here. Happy Thor's Day to all who celebrate. Our guy Thor is under the weather this morning. He is a he's a last minute deactivation for Purple Daily here today. So we're hoping that he starts. Came to out for warm ups. Yeah, Came out just, for warm ups. We watched him. Happening. He's like, I can't do it. I was like, okay. Just, uh, all right. You sure? Yeah. You sure you can't the, do it? The inactive list came out and Thor is ah. yep. inactive here today. But we do have a great show planned for you today, including the Vikings free agency class, perhaps being the best in franchise history. A couple nuggets that are going to blow your mind. And also, is it a Sam Darnold revenge game? He was asked about that, and we can talk about his answer. But let me just take a <clears throat> clear my throat here. Take a sip of this. Mm. 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 Ah, I got some water in here today. But uh, it's a Pepsi 32-ounce Justin Jefferson Souvenir Cup, brand new. You can find these inside local Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh locations. The best part is there's a QR code on the side of this cup here, which allows you to scan it and enter to win Victor's Ride, a glorious Vikings-themed Polaris ATV that was won last year by our guy Jason and Egan. They literally brought this to his house with Victor, with CJ yeah. Ham, the Skull Line. Judd was out there. Judd drove it from they didn't the western me. suburbs to uh, to Egan. Can you imagine Judd on that? Thing? You know, the car was breaking oh, down the summer for for training camp. Judd just hops on an ATV and is going down one hundred highway one hundred, just connected oh. on the loop de loop up four hundred four ninety four. I can see it now with his I braids. Can see it now. His Vikings braids. So get your Pepsi 32 ounce Justin Jefferson souvenir cup at uh, local hy V fast and fresh locations. And a bunch of you have sent me pictures of, of yours. So tweet us at Phil Mackey, send us your cups. Okay. I know that uh, on your sub stack, your Judd Zilgad sub stack, you did a dive into this. Mm -hmm. So let's bring it to the show here. And this was part of your hottest Vikings takes. Did the Vikings land the best free agent class in franchise history? These are these are seven of the guys, and there's a couple others I'm probably missing here, but Sam Darnold getting MVP consideration early on mm-hmm. at a fourth of the price of the previous quarterback. Yep. That's, Aaron Jones. That becomes a very important part. Yep. Jonathan Grenard, who right now is tied for second in the NFL among edge rushers in pressures. Aiden Hutchinson has 40 pressures, which is ridiculous. Grenard has 22, so there's a sizable gap between where Aiden Hutchinson's at and uh, the rest. But Grenard has more pressures than Miles Garrett, Micah Parsons, uh, you name it. Daniil Hunter. Daniil Hunter has 16 pressures. Grenard has 22. Grenard has more sacks than Daniil Hunter. He's got seven stop tackles, so he's just he's been awesome for the Vikings. Yeah, he's just a great fit for the defense. Andrew Van Ginkle. Blake Maybe. Cashman. Stefan Gilmore, Shaq Griffin. Did the Vikings land the best free agent class in franchise history? I Four games in, I'm calling it. I think the answer is 100% yes. Again, I went back and looked, and look, they have signed some great individual players, okay? Uh, Antoine Winfield, circa 2004. Uh, Brett Favre, 2009. I mean, you had, you had Kirk Cousins, 2018, was a huge splash. Like they like individually, you can certainly go through and find some examples of the Vikings have hit on free agents in a big way, but they have never had a class this deep that contributes this much. Case in point. So to complete the list that you were just referencing, Phil, I count 12 players who are on the roster right now who were who were what I would call veteran priority free agents. Eight of them are essentially starters. Shaq Griffin doesn't necessarily start, but he plays in the nickel, which is essentially a starter. So eight of them are are starters. Uh, Kamu Kuje Hill came in at linebacker. He did not play a snap in the defense in the first two games. For two games. Uh, And then Ivan Pace Jr. gets hurt. He steps in and not only plays, he gets two key picks in two games and makes a difference in the exact role that he's asked to play jihad ward has stepped in and you know statistically because 
he well, he's an outside linebacker, but it's BS. He's really a really big guy that that, that can play interior. He's really line. a really big guy. But yeah, he's not an outside linebacker. He he in no way, shape, or form fits what they consider to be a pass rush guy. So anyway, co- co- he, he's second on the team in pressures right now. Most most of his yeah. snaps are coming from the B gap. The and B look, gap. And look at his snaps ah. though. I checked out his snaps. He's getting a lot of snaps. He's he's one of their key rotational guys. So I don't think it's close, you guys. And here, so here's the key though. So these guys are contributing. Um the Vikings have never gotten this many contributions in one season this quickly, too, from a free agent class that is incredibly deep. But let me give you the numbers. So, Kirk Cousins, cap hit 2024, $25 million. Daniil Hunter. On the Vikings books. Uh, yeah, but also now on the Falcons books as well. But what? But is that what cap number is that? The Falcons number for him? That's, or the, ca- that, that's the Falcons. That that okay. is what they have is the Falcons number with his contract in Atlanta. Um, Daniil Hunter in Houston, thirteen point seven million dollar cap hit. And I am only talking about cap hits right now. So for for this season, how did you play the shell game? Okay, mm-hmm. if you take the twelve guys that we have talked about here free agents and put them all together their cap number is 39.3 million dollars approximately i believe i did the math six hundred thousand dollars more than if you put cousins and hunters cap hits with their new teams together let's go with the eight guys that are playing a ton of starters so technically starters 32.7 million dollars mm-hmm That's so, this is where you're playing the game you're not only getting tons of contributions but Aaron Jones, one-year contract. It might have been more than the Packers are paying or were willing to pay. It's a bargain. Sam Darnold, to your point, MVP candidate, $10 million, which, by the way, is a $5 million cap hit this year because they deferred five as, as well. So I don't think that there's a debate. I think this is easily the best free agent class this team has ever brought in. Yeah. And the the deferral of money in the future, because a lot of this has been a conversation about just 2024, and but by having so much flexibility in 2025 and 26, it allows you to bring in even like Darnold on a one year deal. But we got so much room going forward. Let's let's put a void year in, right, and kick five million dollars right. of the accounting down the road. And five. Yeah, and man, if you just yes, this by volume and by production. The fact that they nailed basically every one of these guys to this point, there's there's not a dud to be had on this list. Yep. Really? I mean, it's the it, only, it runs like 10 deep. The only one I can find and who didn't make the roster, he's on the practice squad and has been up for a game, so he does contribute, is Jonah Williams, who they signed from the Rams, was cut but then signed to the yeah. practice squad. But but the only the only guy from this list of 12 who is not directly contributing in some way shape or form r- right now is backup guard and center Dan Feeney. He's the only one who like isn't Feeney. playing so far. Feeney. And he could play. So yeah. I I just think the totality of what they did is really impressive. He could get some I mean injuries obviously. He's kind of the next man up or if Ed Ingram continues to be a weak link on the offensive line. Correct. It also warrants really updating Quasi Adolfa Mensa's resume as a general manager. Correct. He doesn't get the first couple rounds back of the 2022 draft, which we have hammered for two years on this show. Yep. But let's let's update his resume now. Cause you know, when you when you put together your resume, if you got a couple maybe you had a couple crappy jobs or a a bad start or a stop early in your career. Well, once you accumulate positive points on your resume, you just leave those off, right? It's great. So if I'm crazy, I'm probably just going to leave off the first couple rounds of the 2022 draft and say, oh, yeah, it was just a, just a transition period in my life. I was I was traveling abroad during the first couple rounds of the draft. Where, where were you exactly in <laughs> April of 22? I don't remember. Uh, backpacking across Europe with my you couldn't my find me off the grid. Yeah. I was off the grid. <laughs> and I would start with I would start with, you know, the the mid to late rounds. I would say, "Listen, okay, let's let's go back to the 2022 draft, the last part of it." Well, Ed Ingram has been a 3-year starter. Okay, maybe he's not the best guard in the world, but he's a 3-year starter on a on a good offensive line. Uh, Jalen Naylor has become 
outside of being a backup punt returner, an experiment that we should never see again. Right. He's been excellent as a number three wide receiver. Right. Ty Chandler has been a great little change of pay, uh, pace running back for you, four and a half yards of carry this year. So he is he has sort of salvaged the 22 draft. 2023 draft, Jordan Addison, one of the best number two wide receivers in the NFL. Yep. Makai Blackman would have been a starting cornerback for your team this year, if not for the knee injury. Uh, Jay Ward is a four-phase special teamer. Jay Ward has like the second most special team snaps of anyone on the roster. Like he yep. is a key figure and at some point might factor into the actual defense. Hmm. 2024 draft, still very much a work in progress because J.J. McCarthy is out for the year and Dallas Turner will see. Will Reichard was drafted and he mm-hmm. looks f- fantastic so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you made all the points about swapping out a $45 million, 36 year old quarterback on a four year contract for Sam Darnold for 10 million and flexibility at the position. And then adds like eight to 10 key free agents while also preserving as we look ahead, the sixth most cap space going into 2025, according to over the cap, the Vikings have like $63 million dollars in effective cap space for 2025 yes. and open books beyond that. Plus, they preserve their first-round pick, not moving up into the top well, three or top five to get a quarterback. And and I don't think it's a mistake that it appears, if you look at 22, that draft, and 24, that, that his philosophy shifted entirely o- away from accumulating picks to, no, let's go get... I, I mean, the Dallas-Turner trade got panned. I would far rather be aggressive there then I, I would say, let's trade back and get a bunch of third round picks. Mm-hmm. But I, I think what this speaks to too is, and, and Quasi, you're right, gets credit. Like he, he is the final guy. He is the final link to a lot of these decisions. But I, you know, I don't think he's going out and spotting the talent. I think that this speaks to the coaching staff. Brian Flores has a type he likes. O'Connell, I'm sure, is the, the one at the end of the day who said, I, you know, Sam Darnold's going to work and here's why. But beyond that, The pro personnel staff, like, you know, last year, if I had said, tell me a lot about, you know, Trent Sherfield, you'd be like, uh, yeah, not much. And, and, and I'm not saying he's great, but he plays a ton of special teams and he's contributed. He blocks, but, but, you know, Grenard was a big name signing, but he wasn't exactly a household league name. Blake Cashman. I had no idea. I, I told Chip this because Chip, you know, covered Blake with the Gophers. I had no idea that he was this good. Like that guy is all over the place. He was again on Sunday. So the pro personnel staff also gets a ton of of credit and Quasi, it falls on his desk. So yes, he definitely does. But I think what this is a testament to is how well this entire staff, at least right now, seems to be working together to identify and then land guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, Yes, there's been some rocky moments, but it just it kind of felt like once the entire organization, starting with ownership too, decided, okay, are we are we ready to turn a corner here and change the way that we look at the quarterback position? Everyone good on that? Okay. <laughs> Ever since then, it feels like things have fallen into place with the 2024 draft. I will say Dallas Turner's only played about 60 snaps. We've seen we very little yet. of yeah. him yet. So we, we just don't know on Dallas Turner. We can't chalk that up to a win, and we won't know on McCarthy. So like obviously, yeah. how we judge Quasey is going to hinge a lot on those two players that we've just seen very little of. But to, to maintain all of that flexibility, because the Vikings have the financial flexibility right. to add, this is the most space they've had in years to operate in the month of March. They're going to be in the mix for a couple big-time free agents if they want to be. Uh, maybe a defensive tackle. Maybe it's a younger cornerback than you have right now. So super interesting. Dex, you got some? Yeah, I, I just think with them basically changing their entire philosophy and going in to this free agent class with a ton of money and and figuring and you know navigating the whole Kirk contract dead month. They they still had a bunch of things working against them, and it's completely worked for them. And the Dallas Turner trade, a lot of people were absolutely crapped on and. Yeah, I probably want to see him a little bit more. And I'm still, if I, if I, I don't think I can make this bet at a sports book, but like I would still bet on the Vikings trading back in this year's class. Like I, I, I would bet that's probably going to be a given with the fact they just don't have a ton of picks. But they have positioned themselves where they moved on from a good but overpaying a quarterback that's not great 
into being 4-0 with Sam Darnold, who, by the way, just got awarded Player of the Month in the NFC. He was the Offensive Player of the Month for September. Um, you have a guy that literally everyone wrote off, and he's leading your team with a bunch of other players that were brought in that you kind of thought, okay, let's see what these Vikings can do, and they're legitimately three wins away from hitting their Vegas over-under, and it's October 3rd. Yeah, absolutely. And on the real quick on the first round, I agree with Declan. I think I think right now they trade back, especially because right right now they'd have one of the last picks in the first round. The way that the standings have shaken out, but I saw something from like NFL Draft Twitter a couple days ago that whatever entity does the evaluation on how many first round graded players are out there, that there's only like it's a really low number of consensus first round graded players. Yes. Early in the process here, right. obviously, yeah, I saw that too. Yep. but that there I may be only this. like 10 to 15 yep. bona fide first round graded players. And obviously, if you don't have one of those 10 to 15 first round picks, which they're not going to, if you're picking 28th or 31st or 32nd, I hope it's not thir- 31st. 32nd that, would be that great. was mentioned yesterday. <laughs> 31st would I, uh, let's just if you're going to go with that, go with 32nd. Yeah, if they're picking 32nd. Yep. Yeah, on one hand, you'd like if if you can pick a player thirty second, well, you get the fifth year option on a first round pick. But you could also just trade back if there's not that many first round graded players, and maybe accumulate an extra third round pick or something. All right, it's Thursday, which means it's a reckless speculation Thursday. Reckless speculation. It's time to go there because there is a date on the calendar this year that is absolutely crucial. November 5th. And I know what you're thinking right now. Election day. Of course it is sports dad. Election day is big. No, 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 no. November 5th is trade deadline day. So here's a question. The Vikings, if they continue to do this, okay. And like they've looked, they've looked really good. This doesn't look like a fluke. I'm sure they'll lose some games, but let's just say they continue to look fantastic. Do you attempt to address any one and you don't have a ton any one of your areas where you could strengthen yourself on november 5th at the deadline i i would say right now and i'm not i'm not you can hit the buzz killington if you want here but as of right now there's there's nothing to add oh. like what what so what, is, really what is what is as of to be right the now guy in our group buzz killington would you add to this group that puts you over the top, like a like a real another shutdown corner? I, in, I don't know. I would say interior good. defensive yep. line, a defensive okay. tackle. Well, I mean, he's not here to speak on his own behalf, but Thor did put out a tweet this week, yep. saying that the Vikings should make a run at Dexter Lawrence. And there, if you Google like My Dex, God. Giants defensive tackle, he's twenty six years old. If you Google wow. like Dexter Lawrence trade, there's a bunch of rumors out there. Which I did yesterday. I did too. I found one saying there's no way they're trading him. But you never know on that. Well, here's the thing. He's got like four years left on his contract. Didn't he just sign a big extension like a year ago or something? And he's a phenomenal player. So, yeah, he's legitimate, especially now that Aaron Donald has come off. It is in terms of interior defensive monsters. It's Chris Jones, Dexter Lawrence, and maybe two other guys maximum. But he's 26. He's under contract for four more years. You'd be talking, and I, I've seen some of the same things you have, which is I was on like Giants not, Reddit, and they're all like, these, back. these NFC North teams think they're going to get Dexter Lawrence. I don't think back. they're trading Dexter Lawrence. I agree, but... But it would cost you for sure two first-round picks. So this year's first, the 2026 first, okay. and maybe some other things. Okay. Can I throw this at you? He makes twenty five million dollars a year. By the way, I'm going to throw this it. at you. I'm 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 going to do it. I'm going to do it. I believe it was in if, to, to, to what year were the Vikings good and the Jaguars were shopping Jalen Ramsey and the Vikings 2019, could have, 18, I think. And the Vikings could have used a corner, and that I believe that was the year that the Rams G- GM declared f them picks, and went out and Jalen Ramsey contributed a lot. I'm just throwing it out there. Before we dismiss this and say, oh, too many draft picks, too many this or that. This team is doing something none of us expected. None of us. It looks legit unless it falls apart. And there is time. There's, you know, slightly more than a month until the 5th of November. I'm putting it out there that 
I always regretted the Vikings not making a move to solidify a position at that time where where there was more need at cornerback then than I think that there is now. But if you could get a needle moving interior defensive lineman game wrecker, Brian Flores salivating. You're saying go full Rams. Go full Rams. We've done picks. Reckless well, speculation. Here's what I'm saying, bigger picture. Beyond that, what I'm saying is if you've got something special, and it appears that the 2024 Vikings might, do you put up the caution flag and say, oh, this is a process? Or do you say, we need to ride this out as best as we possibly can and add now? Because we don't know if a bunch of guys are going to be hurt in 25. You don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. Let's entertain as... Uh... Mason in Ireland, legendary afternoon hosts on ESPN LA say, entertain the premise. Let's entertain the premise here. I agree with Declan and that there's not a whole lot that you, I don't think you should, you've got a great thing going here. So you got to be careful about giving up assets for something you don't really need. But if there was something, it would be interior defense. It'd be like a defensive tackle. I mean, imagine if you had a Chris Jones level player, obviously that would that would solidify your defense on a level that it's not even solidified yeah. right now. Yep. Uh, I just opened an ESPN.com article where they do list out, here are the potential trade candidates, and they, like Hassan Reddick is available, but he's an edge rusher. You don't really you don't need to mess around with that. Um, there's a couple linebackers, but you're solid at linebacker. Buda Baker with the Cardinals is on this list for defensive backs. I mean, there's some names like that. The only defensive tackle name is DJ Jones, with the Broncos, who's just kind of a guy. He's like 30 yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not like an interior pressure guy. Um, the the game-changing names are the Dexter Lawrences. Yep. So you, you'd have to make a phone call to the Giants and say, yeah. all right, you guys aren't going anywhere. Yep, correct. We know that this dude is in the middle of his prime, and he's under contract for a handful more years. So there's no reason for them to trade him. You'd have to give up at least two first round picks. Is is it and he and he'd come in and he would take up a huge chunk of that cap space, which it's there. Would you give up your next two first round picks and maybe some other picks? Well for Dexter Lawrence. I wouldn't have to I will say this in free agency now, I don't need to address that. So correct. Oh, if you because that's the thing. If you could just spend free agency money on Dexter Lawrence, you'd do it, but right. That's the heart like is there a is there a guy With out where there things via are trader right now, free I'm not agency. dismissing that. With where okay. things are right yeah. now, yes. I'm not dismissing that. I think two things. Number one, as we get closer, so like three weeks from now, we'll have a better indication if, you know, injuries are injuries can happen to, like ineffectiveness can happen. So th- those are on the table. But if this draft class indeed is kind of a fart noise, especially with top talent, and you are most likely going to have one of the last five to six picks in the draft, yeah. Give up your first round pick for that. And also give up next year's first round pick. If you believe in the core players that you have uh, like, and like JJ Wisconsin. McCarthy is your future quarterback and Preach. Jefferson's locked in and your Preach. defense has been rebuilt, what 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 good does a twenty eighth overall pick do for you over the next two drafts? Yeah. Yeah, I bleep them picks. I, I agree. Reckless I agree. Speculation. If you added that piece and now you have one of the three premier interior defensive tackles, by the way, he's like 300, he's a 340 pound run stopping monster and is among the league leaders at that position in pressures too. He does everything and he's 26 years old. That's That's the thing. I just don't see the giants doing this, but why, why is it floating out there? There's going to be some, right. And I've read, you know, I've read they will not make this trade. Well, okay, first of all, to your point, they're going nowhere. The GM and coach might get fired. So, like, there's a lot of things here that I think, to Declan's point, are to play out. But would I pursue him? Absolutely. If you if you believe this team can win a Super Bowl, and so far these players have done nothing to cause you to think, yeah, but look at the point differential, right? It's minus two. Like, what has this team done f- to make you think, 
feels a little fluky. You know, Case Keenum's our quarterback, and he's not that well coached up. No, this is this this is a much more legitimate long term window than the the 2017 thing. You thought it the window opened because you found quarterback, and then it turns out like you know it was six years of middle of the pack. So it Dexter Lawrence is the exact type of player you would die to add in March with your free agency money if if a guy like that was available. And then you got him. So and then you got him for next year. Super interesting. Um, you know, you'd probably need a bigger TV if they traded for a 340 pound monster like that, huh? Mm. Uh? Mm. Ro- Roku is America's number one streaming platform. They also make TVs. Get the all in one deal. My wife, my I wife, we went and bought a 65 inch Roku 4K TV that automatically adjusts color and sharpness for shows and sporting events, movies, about a month and a half ago. And uh, we are very happy with that decision. Had a couple baseball games on side-by-side side last night. It was great. Go to Roku.com to learn more or shop at a retailer near you. We appreciate Roku TV. Maybe some of you are even watching Purple Daily via YouTube on a Roku TV. Um, what's going on on Underdog right now, Dex? We got just, boom, you blink, and there's Thursday night games happening again. It's great. I know. Another another Kirk game. Maybe you, uh, you know, you don't, you don't believe in Kirk. You want to ride some interception props? You want to ride a turnover prop there? That's also uh, that. That's in play. Keep his also, name out of your mouth. No, I, I, you know, I think I've said his name the least. I think I've said his name the least, which is which is fine. But at underdog, I will gladly play any Kirk Cousins prop, and I will play any other great props that come into mind. You know, on Thursday, there's the thirty percent boost that trickles in there. There's a lot of great ways at underdog at underdog to get in on the fun. Uh, still a 50% deposit offer uh, for when you make your first ca- uh, first time deposit plus a free special pick. So go to Underdog, sign up with promo code SCORE, S-K-O-R, and show me all those winning pickums that you got at Dex's tweets. Shout out to Underdog for helping us out at Purple Daily. Sam Darnold revenge game angle coming up here in a second too, but uh, Federated Insurance has been, you talk about protecting against the Dexter Lawrence's of the world, uh, those lurk out there trying to impact your business. And Federated is like having a great offensive line for your business. They're focused on safety, preventing claims, risk management. Let the team at Federated support and help your business. With over 100 years of experience, they're rooted in Owatonna, Minnesota. They're one of us, so to speak. And uh, they're here to help your business with risk management. Go to federatedinsurance.com to find more information and a full list of industries that they specialize in. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. So, Judd, you were you were out there at practice and press conferences yesterday. This is Jets Week, which Jets. ordinarily would be a big storyline, right? You got Sam Darnold, the team that drafted you third overall, and then the team that put together horrible infrastructure, labeled you a bust, that fan base, and those angry New York media members and then cast you aside and put you in the football career toilet, right? And the Vikings have saved this. So this is an interesting storyline. And Sam Darnold was asked about it by Mark Craig from the Star Tribune. Hey, do you think the Jets failed you during your three seasons? By the way, we know the answer is yes. They clearly failed him with incompetent coaching, no weapons. But Sam Darnold said, no, I think I had a lot of opportunities in New York. I always felt like I could have played better there. Just Which, p- just pouring some water on it, just well, keeping it. Yeah, the the very mature thing to to say, do I think he believes that? No, but that's fine because and and look, I mean that answer is who Sam is. Like Sam's not Sam's not going to he do, you, you can tell at least publicly he's never going to dwell on what what went wrong. Like he's he might privately, he might have, but he does not do that publicly he is not going to I, I think the one I think the one place where he succeeded big time at, as a jet was learning to say as little as possible mm-hmm. because the media is constantly there of course trying to just take your words and twist them unlike here where we are very nice um but so Mark set that question up though in an in- interesting way because if you guys recall a couple weeks ago o- O'Connell talking about young quarterback said, that in his mind, he's right about this. Teams often fail quarterbacks more than quarterbacks fail teams. He's like, young quarterbacks aren't necessarily failures. They're being failed by the system that the team is try as far as trying to cultivate them. And so Mark said, hey, O'Connell said this. Do you feel like the Jets are guilty of this? Which makes it an even more relevant question. And let's just say whenever Darnold's asked about anything like that, 
asked about how his knee is. He's not going to give you any fodder to play with, which again, that's him. And I think it's smart, but yeah, I think we can all agree that Sam Darnold, I'm not saying he would have been great, but did he get a fighting chance with the absolute calamity that that Jets team was and continued to be? We all know that the answer is no. And we sort of know that O'Connell's words a couple of weeks ago were very much colored by what he was talking about yeah. was a guy like Sam Darnold. If it were, if it were you guys, you know, like, you know, Judd, you used to work at the Star Tribune. Now they didn't like ruin your career in the, uh, they really? actually helped your they career helped a lot. They were they great. Me, yeah. So it's different. Like, but you know, Dex with maybe bring me the news or go, if 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 you had an experience like Sam Darnold did at a previous career stop, and he's all trying to downplay it, but if you went out and did the equivalent of three hundred yards, three touchdowns, and like a thirty-one to ten victory against that yep. team, yep, w- would you revel in it? Like if you yes. were Sam Darnold, would you revel in this week wanting to stick it to the Jets? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think that's normal. I I think that's completely rational. I mean, you could make. It, you you can use that like example or that situation in a lot of different you know whether it's your life or like I don't know ex boyfriend girlfriend situation mm-hmm. like you always you want to stick it to that person that you that that had had you before and like look how much I'm thriving post uh, post this situation so the yeah the Jets I mean, are fat the Jets yeah. are fat they look at me yeah. I'm the NFC Player of the Month if I do this three more months I'm literally gonna win the NFL MVP award like if Sam Darnold replicates these numbers over the next three months. He's a favorite, at least, to win MVP. Maybe he doesn't just unanimously win it. But yeah, I think it's completely normal to have that type of of uh, of attitude. And obviously, he's going to put the face fronting on of, no, like, this is, you know, I'm with the Vikings, and that's normal. There's cameras in your face. But deep down, when he's, if he's with his boys or off camera, yeah, he's going to be eating this up. It's got to feel, it's got to feel good. Like, it's got to feel good. Because he, he was, you know, left for dead. And look, I, I mean... He bounced to the Panthers, right? Start started off, I think three and one there. Got hurt, didn't play well. So like, yeah, I, I mean, it's got to feel good. But yeah, he is. Sam is what whatever the opposite of brash is. That's what Sam is. Yeah, is he like a? Is he like a kind of a a beta personality, or is he? Do you think he's just kind of quiet? Like, does he ever give rah rah on the sidelines? Even seems kind of low key. I'm not saying he's like a detriment personality, no, but no, I I think he's quiet. Kinda... I think he's quiet. And and I guess my question is this. Uh, what was he like, like in college? L- like, is this, is this version of Darnold a byproduct of his experiences, which for the, the most part it, were incredibly in part, bad? Yeah. Or has he always... And yeah, I mean, Beta is probably too ne- negative a connotation. Yeah. But yeah, he is definitely a quiet guy. Like, when you go to a press conference and hear McCarthy and then... Darnold, you wouldn't think that they play the same position. Yeah, McCarthy has the has the energy of like a company leader or something. You yes. know, like like you could see him, you could see him doing a TED talk or something. What was that? It was a football cl- a sounder that fired on my computer, which was pretty great. I got all excited. I was we gonna fire that again. Actually, I was going to run around the. I love that room. just has random well, football sounders. I got the no football that. sounders just, like, just ready football, to go. Football, football on? I gotta go. It's football ah. on. Oh, ah. 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 it's time for some fun. football. A lot of alpha personalities. <laughs> but I would say, yeah, I would say that McCarthy shares far more in common with O'Connell. Like O'Connell's like that, perpetually positive. Uh wired exactly like you would expect a quarterback to be Darnold is much more reserved yeah. but it works it's working and look you know what too this team's got in, in this case because of O'Connell I feel like this team's got enough pizzazz and character where you don't look at Darnold's personality as a detriment yeah okay since it is reckless speculation Thursday I got I got another quarterback related question since you brought up McCarthy <laughs> Okay. So we've seen of the rookie class, we've seen three guys featured prominently, the rookie quarterback class, because McCarthy's out, Drake Mays barely played, and Michael Penix is sitting uh, as a backup in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But we've seen Bo Nix, 
Old Bo Nix, 25 pass attempts for 60 yards and a big win over the Jets this last weekend. Caleb Williams, who was never really available. Like, you could have drafted Bo Nix if you wanted to because he went afterwards because Sean Payton manipulated the draft in that way. So yeah, they screwed us. Get their guy, right? Yeah. Pulled some Jedi mind tricks. Caleb Williams, who has shown some flashes. I think the Bears coaching staff feels a little suspect, but he was never really an option because he was going number one overall. And Jaden Daniels maybe wasn't an option, but there was some steam that you could maybe get up to number two if you put enough draft capital on the table. Yep. And Jaden Daniels is having one of the great starts to a rookie season of any quarterback. He leads the NFL in in completion percentage, 82% completions. He's thrown for uh, just under 900 yards in four games, using his legs. Just He looks awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And there were some things. There was some steam that the Vikings were trying to get up to number two, number three, either for Drake May or Jaden Daniels, and that they were offering the 11th overall pick. The Was it the 23rd or whatever they had? The 25th the overall pick. pick. Yep. yep. The Houston pick. And then Correct. potentially a first-round pick in 2025. So if I could tell you right now, you've seen Jaden Daniels for a month. You can now go back. You can rewind history after seeing Jaden Daniels for a month and not having seen McCarthy yet. And you can trade the 11, the 25, so no J.J., no Dallas Turner, a 2025 first-round pick, and something else like to push that trade over the top, and you get Jaden Daniels. Would you go back and do it? Jaden Daniels, yes. Now, I have, I believe Washington basically said no out of the gate. I think so they, too. Yep. They definitely were after. They definitely were trying to, and, and ultimately, the Patriots said no. But they definitely were trying to get May, who we really haven't seen yet, and I don't know. But I mean, Jaden Daniels is as not, not as good. He's better, I think, than advertised initially. And I can only imagine what O'Connell might do, do there. So yeah, I think if you said that Washington says, you know what, let's let's take your draft picks, do a trade. Uh, if I could go back to that fantastic night at the Fillmore, yeah, I probably would do that. Or I would do that. Not okay. Probably. Dax? I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Um, even even if it's obviously a given that I'm going to get this type of version of Jaden Daniels with the production that he's put up. I saw Bill Barnwell, by the way. I think he's his favorite to an NFL MVP on ESPN.com today, <laughs> which is a little... Let's yeah. calm down a little. It's yeah. Darnold. Everyone knows it's Darnold. Everyone knows it's Sam Darnold. Um, I mean, it's a little, a little, little much. His little size much. scares me a little bit, but God, is he good? Derek no, Henry I, might, might. We might have a non-quarterback. There's some options in there. There's yeah, Derek Henry, there. I think, was even in there. Um, but, one. but yeah, I, I, I would not. I would, I would trust this process with JJ McCarthy, and even though Daniels might look like he is the best quarterback in this class, uh, I, I don't think I would. Yeah, I think I, it, he looks fantastic. I'm really bullish on J.J. McCarthy. And the fact that you've got Darnold doing great things here as a bridge and you're one of the best teams in the NFL, and I still get whatever Dallas Turner is going to be and the first-round pick next year, and, and may, maybe some of that draft capital is used to go get your Dexter Lawrence-type player. Yeah, I. I just, it's tempting because now you're seeing Jaden Daniels and yeah, like, oh, my God, this is translating, and he can hit deep passes, and yeah. he can run like Lamar Jackson. Yep. So it's it's very tempting, but it's it's a lot of capital. His size, his size does concern me, I will say that. But yes, I would do that trade. Uh, one more thing for the road here. We are talking about drafts in retrospect, but it's never too early to look at drafts in 2025. I want to mock! Mock! <laughs> Yahoo Sports 2000. We were going to do this with Thor today, but we might as well do it here. Yahoo Sports put out their 1.0 yesterday for the 2025 draft. And it's presented by Ugly Deck. Oh, yeah. At least on our end, it is presented by Ugly Deck, Judd. That's because our friends at Ugly Deck are on a mission to do one thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is rid the world of all of those ugly decks. Book a free deck estimate this month. Get three uh, three free footings included. Just need a deck tweak. Get up to $1,000 off installation or a DIY deck package for the DIYer Ugly Deck. 
can install your footings and ledger and save you from the mess and frustration on the hardest, worst part of building a deck. If you want the top carpenters in maintenance-free decks to build your entire deck, they build year-round, so book a free estimate today for a new deck. Ugly deck, you're looking at them there. Look at those gorgeous decks. It's fall. It's time to sit outside, enjoy some nice, cool weather. No better place to do it than on your ugly deck. Dot com redesigned uglydeck.com uglydeck.com i want a mock mock oh let's we should we should definitely be sprinkling these in on thor's days here these mocks it's if mock they're out, we season. gotta be oh they're out they're out so i'll give you some of the highlights of the early part because the vikings are picking way late in this draft based on their current record Yahoo has Will Campbell, LSU offensive tackle, going number one of the Jaguars here. Travis Hunter, Colorado, two-way player, going to the Dolphins at two. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. First quarterback is Shadur Sanders to the Browns at five. I'm sure Dion will be thrilled about that. Uh, Cam Ward, Miami quarterback to the Rams at eight. Garrett Nussmeyer, the LSU quarterback to the Giants at 10. I love that name, by the way. Nussmeyer. N- Nussmeyer. It sounds like a 1976 Patriots starting quarterback. It does. Yes. Uh, Nussmeyer. Nussmeyer drives back to pass. Oh. Takes the field. Huh? Uh, any other quarterbacks? Uh, Carson Beck, Georgia to the Raiders at 21. Okay. So that's like th- four first round quarterbacks. Scroll and scroll. Oh, no. <sighs> Vikings are picking. 31st. Those, oh, oh, just because the Chiefs have won a couple Super Bowls consecutively, now they're going to win all of them, huh? I think that, yeah, I think the Chiefs are 32nd here. So, with are. the 31st pick in yep. the 2025 NFL draft, according to Yahoo Sports, the Minnesota Vikings select Ohio State edge rusher Jack Sawyer. I want a mock. mock. That sounds like a football player, too. Jack I Sawyer. Want... Jack Sawyer. Another Buckeye in the back half of the first round. Sawyer is listed as an edge defender, but has had playing time in his career across the front seven, depending on Ohio State's defensive call. So versatile. Brian yep. Flores. Yep. Sawyer has pass rushing chops to win one-on-ones and can contribute in a lot of other different ways. He would fit in nicely on a defense that loves multi-use players. I want a mock. So he can, so he can play a bunch of spots. So you, you got... Interior line, then Harrison Phillips, Dexter Lawrence, Bullard, Quite Sawyer comes in. I Scandella. love this. Dexter Lawrence, too, will be a perfect fit then. Oh, wow. I Make it happen. You, there. you didn't see what I did there? I, but, you're I not, but, you're not, but you're not getting Dexter Lawrence and Jack Sawyer. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a good point. Because okay, you'd, be, you'd be giving let's up. Let's try again. No Jack Sawyer. I'm okay with that. Just just Dexter Lawrence. Just and Dexter with the 31st Lawrence. pick, the Vikings trade it to the Giants. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Dexter's all right. right. That, two first-round picks. Yep. Two first-round picks. It's probably, it's probably more than that to get Dexter Lawrence. But, you know, the, you know, the, the Giants, I don't know, man. When the Lombardi They're is being run. driven down 94, no yeah, one's going to care what it costs. I'm definitely fine with two first round picks and we can talk about more. So, all right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us here on this rec turned out to be a reckless speculation Thursday episode of purple daily. Don't forget. We are a couple things. Actually, uh, we mentioned this on the bonus episode, but um, we have an event at Padraig's another purple daily unplugged event. We had, a, it was super fun a couple months ago. We did one at Padraig's. So Monday, October 21st, five to 7 PM, there's a couple Monday night games going on, and we will do a live in-person Purple Daily podcast. Register at scorenorth.com slash unplugged, scorenorth.com slash unplugged for a Purple Daily Unplugged at Padraig's. All right, boys. Oh, and then the other thing, um, what was I going to say? Vikings Vent Line on Sunday, I guess. That was the other thing I was going to promote. Yep. The place to be right after Vikings Jets London LFG. 